How would Freud have handled the coronavirus? What might we learn from a man whom I regard as a real unparalleled genius? I put forward an argument in this book that Sigmund Freud had to navigate not just one pandemic as we are doing now, but at least six pandemics during his lifetime. So Freud grew up knowing that he and his people were hated. And that's a pandemic of a very, very different kind. When Freud coined the term psychoanalysis in 1896, the critics were not attacking all the Jews. They were attacking one Jew only, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud himself and every single one of his family members actually contracted the Spanish flu. In the early months of 1920, Freud's second daughter, and known as Sophie Halberstadt, she succumbed to the Spanish flu in Hamburg in Germany. And Freud wrote that there is nothing more horrific for a human being to have to endure than the loss of a child. But he soldiered on through and then developed two more pandemics with which he ended his life, namely the diagnosis in 1923 with a fast-raging, very virulent, fast metastasizing maxillofacial cancer. And then, of course, with the arrival of Adolf Hitler, Freud had to deal with his final pandemic, namely the Nazi invasion and the fact that he nearly lost his life on several occasions as did several of his family members. I only wish that Freud had been a commentator on CNN or the BBC News, for example, when those people raided the American Capitol building, because he would have said, oh my God, this is a manic defense against the horrors and the passivity of the disease and the government that they cannot control. This is an attempt to try to control death by causing the deaths of others, spreading the disease, attacking politicians, killing police. If Freud were alive today, I would want him not working in consulting. I'd, I'd, I'd quite like him to, to be, you know, uh, on Anderson Cooper's program every night. <laughs>